What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Chemistry. Today, we're talking about predicting the products of a hydration reaction. So just how do you figure out what's going to come out of these reactions? A hydration reaction always means adding water to something. So notice down here we have a water, and we're going to be adding it to our alkene. Water can be thought of as being OH, so that's one oxygen and one hydrogen, connected to a hydrogen. So notice still H2O, we're just drawing it in a kind of suggestive way to help us think about the products of this hydration reaction. Just like in a hydrogenation reaction where you're adding H2, this adds to either side of a double bond. So we get one part of it adding to one side of the double bond and the other part adding to the other side. And so what that means is eventually we can just draw our same line angle structure. And on one side, we're gonna get an OH and on the other, we'll have that hydrogen tack on. Of course, with line angle structures, we don't actually explicitly need to draw the hydrogen, so I can erase that, and it looks like just an OH adding to one side of that double bond. Now, there's some trickier rules with hydration reactions because you have a choice. Which side am I going to add the OH to? And so we'll get to that in just a second. Let's start with the definition of a hydration reaction. So a hydration reaction is the addition of H2O to an alkene and the presence of an acid catalyst to make an alcohol. So... Here we have a couple parts. We have our H2O, we've already talked about that. We have our alkene, that's just our carbon-carbon double bond containing molecule. And then we have an acid catalyst. So in this case, the catalyst you need to get this reaction going is this H plus right there. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add the OH on one side and the H on the other. When you add an OH to an alkene, what you get out is an alcohol. So we'll see that our product is an alcohol. Here's two tips for this. For line angle structures, we remove the carbon-carbon double bond and we add OH to one side. For other structures, we remove the carbon-carbon double bond, and we add an H on one side and an OH on the other. So same basic process. We're just taking into account that for line angle structures, the hydrogen is assumed. So let's do that here. Remember, whenever we're doing organic chemistry reactions, it's really helpful just to start by copying the molecule we began with. So we have CH3 going down to carbon, and then a double bond to a carbon down to another CH3. We have a hydrogen up top and a hydrogen down below. And we'll, we'll, as is our custom, draw our OH and H in green. And what's happening here is the OH is gonna add to one side and the H is gonna add to the other. And that gets rid of our double bond. And that's basically the process of predicting the product. Here's the trick though. In this case, it actually doesn't matter which side I add the OH to, I get the same molecule, but that's not always true. So let's take a look at a case where we get different molecules and then we'll have to think about what specific alcohol we get out. Always an alcohol, but the question is, what alcohol? So now, instead of having two butene, we have one butene that we're adding water to, and we have a line angle structure. So up top, we'll add the OH on one side. So let's just go ahead and copy our alkene. It's got the double bond there. And we get rid of the double bond, and we could add the OH on the left side and the H here. That's one option. Or we could add the OH on the second carbon, and the H on the first carbon. Both of those are possible. Which one happens? Which one of these happens? Well, that's where a rule called Markovnikov's rule comes in. Markovnikov's rule says the carbon with the most hydrogen gains the hydrogen. A way to summarize this is the rich get richer. Okay, so let's think about this rule in the context of these two problems. Uh, the far left carbon, so we're looking at this carbon here. How many hydrogens does it have off in it? Well, it has one, two carbon-carbon double bonds going to it. And so to get to four bonds, that means it has to have two hydrogens. We're just drawing these hydrogens so we can compare how many hydrogens are on each side. Meanwhile, this guy right here, it has one, two, three bonds going to it. So it's going to have just one hydrogen. Okay, so that's the same exact case with our molecule below because these are just the identical molecule. The question is, where is our hydrogen going to add? Our hydrogen is going to add to the side with more hydrogen, which would be that green side, because it has two. And so what that means is this top product is the correct product. This bottom product is not the favored product. So Markovnikov's rule says that the carbon with the most hydrogen gets the extra hydrogen. So we added the H there to that green carbon, and then the OH would have gone to the far side, and we get that alcohol where the OH is on that second carbon. Okay, so Markovnikov's rule says the rich get richer. The carbon with the most hydrogen gains the hydrogen. Let's work a few more practice problems here. Okay, up first, we have some crazy alkene, and all we gotta do is count the hydrogens. 
Once again, really similar to the last example, we have, in this case, two hydrogens on the end to get us up to four bonds, and we have one hydrogen right here. So which side is the hydrogen going to add to? Well, the hydrogen is going to add right here. And that means that our OH is going to add on that blue carbon down here. Okay, so when we draw the product, again, we'll just copy the structure. And we had a double bond there. That double bond is going to go away. And we've said that our OH is going to add on that interior carbon there. And our hydrogen is going to add right here. Now, again, because it's a line angle structure, we don't actually have to draw that hydrogen. So we could just draw this. Okay, let's practice again. Now, this is an expanded structure, so we explicitly have our hydrogens listed. Once again, on the end here, we have two hydrogens. And on the inside, we have one. So guess what? Once again, our OH is going to go to that interior carbon, and our hydrogen is going to go to the outside. So to predict that product, let's go ahead and once again copy our structure. Carbon, double bonded to a carbon. Going down to CH3, and then upright, we got a hydrogen, and we got two hydrogens over here. Remember, our double bond goes away, and our OH is going to add to that carbon that is pointed to in the blue. So our OH is going to go right here, and our H is going to go right there, and we got to get rid of our double bond. The reason you got to get rid of the double bond in all these cases is a couple. One is that it's the electrons that go out to actually form the bonds with your water. The other is, remember that our carbons always want four bonds. And so if I tack on a hydrogen, I got to get rid of a bond that was somewhere else. I'm going to get rid of that double bond. So those are the two correct products there. Let's do two more examples. Okay, here we have a uh, alkene. And the carbon right here, we'll count up how many hydrogens it has on it. It has one. And the carbon right here, it also has one. Because they both have three carbon-carbon bonds coming from those carbons. So the hydrogen and the OH actually can add to either one. It doesn't matter. So in some cases, there's not a preferred product. And so in this case, we'll just copy our structure and you can choose either one. You can draw either spot side as having the OH. In this case, actually, even if you draw it on the other carbon, it's actually the same exact molecule just flipped around 180 degrees. So there are some cases where Markovnikov's rule doesn't tell you which one is preferred. And in that case, you get a mixture of those products if those products make different molecules. Okay, last example problem. Here we're adding OHH to a cycloalkene. In this case, we'll look at our blue carbon down here. It has one hydrogen off of it because there's one, two, three carbon-carbon bonds hanging out there. And then our green one, it actually has zero hydrogens because it has one, two, three, four bonds. It already has all four bonds, so it's totally happy. And so that means that it has to go ahead and get the OH. Remember that the OH is always going to go to the side with fewer hydrogens. And the H is always going to go to the side with more hydrogens. The rich get richer. The thing with hydrogens gets another hydrogen. So we'll draw the product by copying our structure. This has a CH3 and a double bond. Remember, on either side of the double bond is where we're going to add the OH and H. It has to go on those carbons connected to the double bond. And our OH goes right here. And our hydrogen goes here. Because it's a line angle structure, we don't actually have to draw that hydrogen. A lot of people don't love the way this looks. They feel uncomfortable that an OH and a CH3 are attached at the same points. But it's totally fine. That carbon has four bonds, which is legit and allowed. So that's predicting the products of a hydration reaction.